All right, so today we are getting started on our new chicken co coop build, um, something that we've been wanting to do for a while now because the coop that you can see there behind me is made of mostly or all scrap materials, all right? Just salvaged lumber, stuff that we found laying around. Um, we bought some of the wire, some of the wire was salvaged from a different project. And so we are really focusing on um, like our Pinterest inspiration, chicken coop all right you can see some of the designs I have um, on one of my boards here and so we are going to try to make that a reality for today now today we are focusing on the framing out right we're gonna do it in steps we're focusing on number one framing out the actual coop um, number two painting it all right before any mesh or <laughs> before any hardware cloth goes on it all right we're going to paint the entire thing. I have a really pretty color paint that I want to use. Um, it's like a purplish brown kind of thing, all right? And then after the, the framing out and the painting, then we will put on the hardware cloth, all right? After the hardware cloth, we will add our roof and hopefully that'll be it. Everything will come together. Now we are going to try to salvage some of the roof on this one. Um, it's not going to be enough, so I'm going to have to use some additional like roofing materials. Um, I think we're gonna use like metal sheets and panels, but I'm really excited because this coop behind me is not really up to my standards now that I've been chicken keeping for three and a half-ish years. Let me show you what I mean. As you can see, the door kind of gets stuck a little bit. Um, it's warped over time. Just letting the chickens out to kind of free range for a little bit. Um, the first thing I want to change is this nesting, bo nesting box. All right, you can see um, we have a hen in there already. But basically, this is like, you know, made out of uh, two by four and plywood and it works. It works. You can see that the girls do lay eggs in there. But as you can see, the material in here that I've put in is kind of like eroded and they peck it out. Um, and overall, it's not very functional. I want something that has a little bit more of a functional um, aspect to it, like a convenience. I can just take the nesting box or take the eggs um, and hopefully something that protects the eggs from cracking. Now, the second thing is this roosting bar. This is actually where the coop was like sectioned off. All right, I had plywood panels, just like I did on that back section here. I had the front parts are um, also sectioned off. And then we ended up removing them because it gets so hot here in Florida um, and they don't really need it. And these just became their nesting boxes. So you can see they're not the cleanest, um, but I don't, you know, I, I just want a little bit more of a, like a prettier area for them to roost um, and probably something that's not right above their water. All right, this is their watering system. You can see how dirty it gets. So I would want to put this in a separate area. Um, and then their food here also, we'll probably keep this same system because I really do like not having to change out their food, um, you know, every not to having to feed them every day, first of all. And then we feed them like every three weeks, every four weeks with this system and it works out really great, but maybe making it a little bit nicer or putting it in an area that, you know, is a little bit more functional. Okay, so this coop is actually on the side of our house here. I'm standing towards the right of the house. We just parked the truck all the way back there. That's actually where the new coop is going because I wanted something under the trees, right? It gets tons of sun in this area. And I mean, that's great for, you know, the chickens and eggs and all of that, but it's, it's really hot and the chickens <laughs> like just about roast. Um, so we are gonna be putting this under the trees in the back part of our property where I'm walking to now. Okay, so this is pretty much where the tree line starts. I'm still like in this really sunny area and then right there is under cover, under shade. Um, Alan's over here unloading supplies from the car. So one of the really great things about putting the chicken coop under the trees besides the fact that it gets shade is that we're actually gonna use these two trees. I think it's that one back there and the one here. We're gonna use those two trees as the supports for the back of the chicken coop and build off of that. Um, this area gets like dappled light at, you know, what, it's what five or six o'clock now. Um, during the day, it gets a lot more light, but it is still shaded, a lot more shaded than that other area is. So hopefully this will be a really great spot. 
Now this part probably took the longest out of all of the steps, mainly because we did have a picture that I drew and we worked off of that, but it really wasn't a set of plans. So we were really trying to figure it out as we go, like assembling a set of Legos basically. But also because as you can probably tell, I'm about five and a half months pregnant when we build this. So between not being able to lift a ton and getting tired a lot and needing to take a lot of breaks, Alan really did do the majority of this part on his phone. I took care of measuring out the 2x4s, cutting them with the miter saw, and holding any screws or other materials that he needed. We would come out to the property after work to do this until the sun went down, which was about 2 or 3 hours every day. So overall this took us about 4 days to finish, right, for the framing part of it, and I know that may seem like a lot of time to some people, but considering that neither Alan nor myself have a lot of experience with building things, I think we actually did a pretty good job. All right, so we have to have this chicken coop finished by the end of the weekend, and we have just passed some of the initial framing. Um, we still have a long ways to go. Um, we have to have it done by the end of the weekend because they're gonna connect the, um, the well to the house, all right, which means that they're disconnecting the well, which means we cannot use the well to water our chickens. And so in order to get water over to this new coop, we have to do it by the end of the weekend, putting a little bit of a time crunch on us. Now, in order to get that done, Alan is gonna continue framing while I do some of the painting. Normally we wouldn't do painting um, until after we finish building something, but I'm gonna keep going um, as much as possible. And my dad has come out here to help us, um, or really to help Alan finish the framing and get it all sorted out. All right, so here's where we're at so far. Really, it's just a big square box. You can see it kind of like leans back in the, um, in the back of the coop. It kind of leans downward. All right, so right, this is 16 feet by eight feet. You can see it leans a little bit. I think this is seven feet on this end. And over there in that corner is eight feet tall. Um, now, our original plan was to use a lot of these um, framing anchors and we ended up not being able to use them. They're just a little bit too flimsy for what we needed. Um, and originally, or actually, um, yeah, I guess originally we thought this was a little bit more flat than it actually is. Of course, we didn't bother to level it all out because what we're gonna do is afterward, we're just gonna come back, right, and do the same thing over here like we've done and put um, any necessary, like, boards in the bottom. Um, and this whole thing is gonna have, like, a little um, mesh around it anyway, so there won't be any gaps, really. Um, we have used all two by fours. Um, we've tried to cut as little as possible. Um, and then hopefully soon this will be all mesh um, and then we'll put the roof on it and we're gonna be good to go. So as I mentioned before, I got this really pretty purplish gray paint to protect the wood. As I was painting, I decided I really didn't like it too much. It seemed a little too purple, but the next day we came back after it had dried and I decided to leave it since it looked way better. Let me know what you think in the comments. I started painting while Alan finished up the framing and my dad was able to help him a bit, even though he is still recovering from his stroke, but it was nice to have him included um, even in this small way. All right guys, so this is our progress for today. You can see some of it's painted. It's actually a lot more purple than I thought it was gonna be. Um, we'll see once it completely dries. It's supposed to be a little bit more gray. You can see we did a little peak on top. It is just a faux peak. And then right in the middle there, um, where you can see my dad is standing, except on the front side, we're gonna do some double doors with some black hardware. Um, we don't really have any plans for this. We just kind of you know, tried to fit it together where it goes. Um, we are gonna hardware cloth the entire thing. And then right here, on the front side of the coop, we'll put another beam to reinforce it. And then on this side, in this huge opening here, we're gonna be reinforcing this as well, but we are going to be doing um, an automatic coop door, which I'm super excited about, and some rollout nesting boxes on this side. All right, so hopefully we'll get that reinforced, ready for tomorrow, um, and then hardware cloth on the entire thing, mesh, skirt on the bottom so that predators don't get in and then we get the doors and then our coop is done. Now for the next day we decided that if we we're actually going to get this done by the end of the weekend we needed to call in some real reinforcements. So we set up a bribe to lure Alan's brother and sister-in-law to help us out and we were able to get so much done with their help. While Alan and his brother framed out the automatic coop door and our new rollout nesting boxes and hung the hardware cloth his sister-in-law helped me finish up the paint, and then we built and hung the front double doors for the coop. 
Keep in mind that we did need to take lots of breaks because it was literally 95 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Um, so of course we tried to take cover under some of the pine trees for shade and drink tons of water and just to really relax when we could. You can see at this point that the automatic coop door and the rollout nesting boxes were already in and I absolutely love the way they turned out. I opted to put them in this corner to make my life easier since the path to the chicken coop is actually on that same side, making it easier for me or for the kids to go out there and collect eggs every day. I also didn't want them near the water or feeder or the roosting bars, so having them in this corner together made the most sense, keeping them out of the way and clean. I did actually mean to film the rest of the build for you guys, but without realizing it, my camera battery died and when I went to check, that's actually all the footage I had from the build. So I went back the next day after everything was done just to add some final touches to the coop and I did film that, um, like this extra board that I added in between the double doors just to ensure there wasn't too much of a gap. I also installed a latch on the inside of the left door so that only the right one opens up when I unlock it. And then if I want to open both doors at the same time, I can just unlatch the left one also from the inside. All right, so we finally got the coop done. Um, definitely a work, all right? It's definitely a work of art here. We spent upwards of, I think like 20 hours or so between everything painting and just getting everything prepped and ready. Um, definitely worth it though. So let me show you what we put in it and how this is gonna make our life significantly easier moving forward. All right, so this is my original design of the coop. I know it's a little bit hard to read here, um, kind of hard to see, but this is my original design with the double doors and everything in front. And then this is how the coop turned out. And I absolutely love it. You can see our chickens are already in, our double doors, and then a few surprises here in front, which I'm excited to tell you guys about. So let's go ahead and collect some eggs here. All right, this is the first thing that I was really excited to share with you guys. This is actually a roll away nesting box. I'll come over here. I might just have our ladder here and our supplies and stuff. Um, but if you can see, and I will go inside the coop, all right, this is <laughs> um, our nesting box, right, where that chicken is standing on. The chickens go in that side of it, and then I'm able to collect eggs from outside of the coop. You guys, I have had this for about a week now, all right? This is like the little predator latch thing here, so that predators, like raccoons and stuff, can't open it. I've had it for about a week now, and let me tell you, I freaking love it. Look at how clean these eggs are. Now, I did actually collect eggs earlier today, um, so that's why there's only a few of them in here, but I mean, I cannot complain. All right, you got like maybe one or two scratch marks on it, but I mean, for the most part, like all of these eggs are super clean. All right, and actually some of them are still warm, but tell me that's not awesome, you guys. This is the Hen Gear nest box, and I love it. So basically, right, the nesting boxes are on that side. You see the roost, right? So all the chickens staring at us. Um, and then this is like at a slope and this is actually like you can take this out and clean it um, and all of them run like the eggs roll out here and then stop here and then we got nice clean eggs right and then every day I can just come in here and collect my eggs now the second thing that I absolutely love that we did here is the automatic chicken coop door so this is from run chicken um, I currently have the batteries off right I removed this entire panel and took the batteries out um, just so that our girls can stay in there. Like I could have probably just turned this off. It has like a little switch underneath here um, that you press to like turn it on and off and you know, all the settings. But I didn't want anything to mess with it because it actually opens up during the day and closes at night by itself. Um, and I didn't want anyone getting out just because they need to be acclimated to their new coop here. All right, which is why I am leaving them in here without free ranging for a couple of weeks. Now that is just for the next, um, I wanna say a week or so, because they've already been in here for a good week and a half um, at this point. So they should be good to free range. And then at that point, I'll put the batteries back and I'll make sure that they have everything they need so that they can come and go as they please. Um, and it's awesome because it has a little sensor that's able to just open and shut by itself. I don't have to worry about it at all. Okay, so now to actually go inside of the coop. Um, you can see we have a metal roof on it, right? We reused some of the roofing panels from the last coop. 
um, but then we bought new ones and you can't really tell the difference anyway. If you're wondering what this is, like that, blo that, um, that block behind, right? That is actually our meat chicken coop. Um, so we just put it behind so that it kind of like bumps up to it. Um, I have my little gate latch here, right? So if I open that up, um, this one is actually stationary. So this one opens. I'm trying to make sure they don't get out at the same time. Um, so this one opens and this one has a latch on the corner on the inside, which I'll show you guys. All right, let me just get in here really quickly. Excuse me, guys. Excuse me, excuse me. Beep, beep. All right. And then I have a little hair tie here also. That way, right, I'm not locking myself in, but I can still close this as needed. And then this one, if I ever want to open this, it has a little latch to unlatch that door, right? So that catches. You guys like a new coop? All right, so I'm standing in the coop so far. Um, I think he likes it. So there is going to be a bar that comes from this corner to that corner. I just haven't actually put it up yet um, in the same way that those ones are. You can see kind of like the scrap wood in that little back corner. Um, so this one. Those are our roosting bars, right? So they can go up there and there's plenty of space for them. They like to be as high up as possible. Um, and then you can see, and then you can see our large feeder, right? With the little ports on it. Um, I'll leave everything linked below um, if you guys want to like make this yourself. I actually have an entire video on how I made this feeder, um, including the ports and everything. So I will leave that linked. And then I'll also leave the link for the nesting boxes which so far have been working out really really great um they which i did not know this but the reason that it's all red is because apparently chickens are attracted to red um so it like trains them to go in there or something which i mean i you can see like i didn't put it right on the ground for them i put it kind of like i think it's total the top of this bar is like two and a half feet off the ground um which was the recommendation and they started using it by themselves i haven't really had any issues with that um and then you can see over here, right? The chicken drinking out of the nipples, um, the poultry nipple water thing that I have here. That is a 55 gallon barrel and that is amazing. It collects rainwater and then filters down there and they all drink and no like muddy mess everywhere. Now this I wanna share with you guys, all right? This specifically is pine bark mulch, right? So. I learned the very hard way not to use um, the traditional deep litter system because it gets like really nasty and this actually breaks down much much slower um, so it ends up being much better for like not having to change out the litter all the time and like not having to clean so much so you can see I think this is about 14 bags or so um, this side of the coop here from the back side it's like where the nesting boxes are that's eight feet that is eight feet and then from one side all the way to this side that is 16 feet and then this little pop out here is an additional two feet by four feet i want to say um yes two feet by four feet and i'm thinking about maybe putting some pavers in this little area right so that it's kind of like a little step and drop down um, eventually so once i get pavers i'll do that but they have tons more space in this new coop than they did in the old coop um, eventually I will get some more chickens and we're planning on putting ducks in here as well. And then I just have, ooh, I just have a little lock on it here. Um, just because we're you know we're still in the construction in the house so i make sure that um that no one comes in and steals any of my birds because we did have somewhat of a sort of issue with that at one point so we just have that um with a lock for right now and then i want to talk for a minute about the materials we used right so this is all um two by fours right we used pressure treated and then the ones that are actually on the floor are ground treated ground contract ground contact pressure treated two by fours there you go um and then you can see we have some chicken wire along the floor here um now this is kind of like it's just being held down right now but 
everything is going to drop on top of it and then predators basically what this prevents is predators digging underneath the coop we've had issues with predators digging here and then getting in the you know actually in the coop in a hole um, so that prevents the predators from getting in and then we actually used hardware cloth this is quarter inch hardware cloth around the entire coop um, I know it's more expensive than chicken wire but you know it's not worth losing the predators over in my opinion so and one of my absolute favorite things is this little peak thing on top um, we are not very good at building stuff um, so I'm very proud of myself I didn't put like any material on top I'm not really tall enough to show you guys the top of it um, but it has hardware cloth all throughout there right so it's not just open to the sky um, I want to make sure Hawks didn't get in from that side either so all of that has hardware cloth as well so overall I'm super happy with the way that this chicken coop came out um, this is the one that we're planning on keeping for a while which is why we went a little bit um, extra on the materials right the last chicken coop when we tried to move it actually fell apart completely because none of the two by fours were pressure treated or you know ground contact any of that so we tried to get a little bit nicer materials a um, little bit more expensive but I mean probably not you know too far off from like a manufactured chicken coop this chicken coop is 16 by 8 which is 128 square feet total um, not counting the little pop-out er area um, so it's pretty large for the size block that we have right now considering that they do free range we don't have like an actual coop inside the run um, we tried that a while back um, and it just it got so dirty all the time and because of the amount of heat it was always overheating no matter how much ventilation we added to it um, so really this is just like their coop and run in all all right this is this is their coop really and then the rest of our property will be their run so pretty big space for their coop um, if you want to see how I did um, the extra large feeder I will leave that on the screen and then also if you want to see the actual cost <laughs> and then if you want to see my actual cost on actually raising these chickens for eggs I will also leave that on the screen somewhere here um, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one bye